God has created us to live a life of influence. Pastor, let me see this year. Let me enjoy this year. Maybe in 2025, I'm going to do something. Maybe in 2026, I might try to do something. God says, no, it doesn't work that way. Pastor, it is easy for me to be happy. How do you be happy? No word, nothing. Going around, partying. So good. How long? Just question yourself. One day, really good. Excellent. Three days, good. Fourth day, getting bored of the fun. Sixth day, you just want to stop having fun. Pastor, my past, you don't know how horrible my situation is. You do not know what kind of life I have lived. God says, you know what? I don't really care about your past. All that I care is about your future. How do you handle right now dictates what is going to happen in the future. How do you handle your emotions right now? How do you want to take care of your health right now? How do you want to take care of your eating habits right now? How do you want to take care of your dressing sense right now? It is all about right now. It is not about the future. It is about right now. If you take care of your right now, your future is automatically going to be taken care of. Remember, your future is much more important than your past. Today we are going to talk on the topic called how to live a life of influence. Everybody say how to live a life of influence. So uh, everybody wants to live a life of influence, no doubt, right? Everybody wants to live a life of influence. And as a matter of fact, that's how God designed our life. God has created us to live a life of influence. God did not design our life so we can just live just for the sake of it. God did not want you to die paying bills. God did not want you to die, you know, just living a life. I'm going to take the scripture from uh, Matthew chapter 13. Let's all open our Bibles to Matthew chapter 13, verse 3. Uh, Matthew chapter 13, verse 3, and this is what it says. He told them still another parable. The kingdom of God, of the kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed into a large amount of flour it, until it worked all through the dough. So actually, this is the Principle, this is, the, this is where we find the principle of the kingdom of God. The principle of how kingdom of God works. And this is exactly how God wants you to work. Uh, so what happened is, uh, a woman took a yeast uh, and she mixed it thoroughly into the dough and she placed it in the, in the night. So if you look at this scripture, what is greater, the yeast or the dough? Definitely the yeast is much more greater than the dough. The yeast, it influences the dough and the Tao is being influenced by the yeast. So today my question to you is, are you the yeast or the Tao? God exactly created you like the yeast. He did not create you like the Tao. Most of us, we want to be the Tao because being the Tao is easy. Being the uh, flower is easy. You know, but God wants you to be the yeast and that's how God designed you. You know, if you're created like a fish and you want to be a lion, that is impossible, right? So in the same way, God has created you to be like a yeast. And if you want to be like the flower, God says that's impossible. I have created you to be like the yeast. That means God has created you to be a, be a person of influence. So my dear brothers and sisters, let me ask you a question. Is it, is it important for you to live long or is it important to you, for you to live a life of influence? Most of you think, Pastor, it's really important for us to live a long life so we can then slowly create our, ourselves into a life of influence. God says no. For example, Methuselah lived 969 years. Jesus Christ lived 33 and a half years. So who's greater according to age? Definitely Methuselah. But according to influence, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, as a matter of fact, he worked, he served only three and a half years. And he created such an impact where it is still impacting you. What did Methuselah create? Nothing. As a matter of fact, what is written about Methuselah is, Methuselah lived 969 years and then he died. Nothing that he achieved, nothing that he did, no impact. So, age is not the measure of impact. Age is not the measure of impact. My dear brothers and sisters, if it was so, then Jesus definitely wouldn't have been greater than Methuselah. Some of you might be thinking, Pastor, let me see this year. Let me enjoy this year. Maybe in 2025, I'm going to do something. Maybe in 2026, I might try to do something. God says, no, it doesn't work that way. God says, I've given you the gift of 2024. So why don't you just work it out? God says, I have given you 2024. So 2024 can be a blessing in your life. Whoever agrees, say amen. Life is created so you can live in phases. Life is created so you can live in phases. Some of us, we have defeats. Some of us, we have success. 
Some Sundays, it is just two, three people. Some Sundays, it is 200 people. My dear brothers and sisters, what am I trying to say? Do not get yourself attached to a phase in your life. Life is much more important than a phase. Some of you, probably you're attached to a success. You might be thinking, I already have success in my life, so why should I be afraid of something? God says, never be attached to a phase in your life. You might, your business might be broken. You might, your heart might be broken. Probably your girlfriend left you. God says, it's okay, cheer up. That was just a phase. God says, you need to just pull back yourself. Just enter this new phase. Go and achieve what I have put in front of you. Never get attached to something which is temporary. Some of us, we think, oh, pastor, I'm successful. So, well, I'm successful already. God says, hey, watch out. Probably your biggest enemy is your past success. Do not just cling on to that success story which you had already and just do not try to narrate that your whole life. You are only 25 years old. Just do not think of that one lakh rupee salary that you're getting already. God says, I'm going to bless you beyond your imagination. Everybody say amen. I'm going to bless you beyond your thought. Some of you might be thinking, Pastor, mine is a failed story. I'm a failure. I'm a love failure. I'm a business failure. I'm a marriage failure. I'm a relationship failure. I'm the biggest failure in my life. God says, hey, that was just a phase. You just need to pick yourself up. Just walk on that walk of life. Hallelujah. No phase is forever. How do you say so, pastor? Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1. This is what it says. There is a time for everything under the sun. There is a time, a season for every activity under the heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. What, are, what does God say? That means uh, there's a time for everything. Better, if you think you're a failure, just hold on. Just walk in that walk of faith. You're going to see success down your lane. You might be thinking, Pastor, I'm so successful. God says, you know what? Your success is just temporary. Your success is not eternal. If you see this, verse 10, I have seen a burden. I have seen the burden God has laid on men. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the hearts of men. Yet they cannot fathom what God has done from the beginning to end. I know there is nothing better for men than to be happy and to do good while they live. Now you might be thinking, Pastor, isn't that true? There is nothing better for men to be happy than and to do good. So my question to you today is, is it easier for you to be happy or is it easier for you to sloth, work hard and live a good life? Come on, answer me. You, you, you can easily say, Pastor, it is easy for me to be happy. How do you be happy? No work, nothing, going around, partying. So good. How long? How long is my question. Just question yourself. One day, really good. Excellent. Two days, fantastic. Three days, good. Fourth day, getting bored of the fun. Fifth day, tiresome of the fun. Sixth day, you just want to stop having fun. So what is this thing called good? Now, listen to that. Verse 12, I know that there is nothing better for men than to be happy and do good while they. So here, what, what Solomon is saying is, it is not a happiness that is temporary, that is momentary. You clearly need to understand this. Solomon says, I know that there is nothing better for men than to be happy and do good while they. So doing good and being happy is not a part of life. It is life. You got to understand this carefully. Being happy is not momentary. Being happy is lifetime, is what Solomon says. My dear brothers and sisters, how do you be happy? Pastor, I'm always working. Is that work giving you happiness? You just need to question. If that work is giving you happiness, then you are happy. Hallelujah. Is it not giving you happiness? Then probably that's not the purpose of your life. Probably God has made you something else. You just need to start thinking of it. Probably it's time for you to change your role of life. Hallelujah. We always forget the purpose. Purpose. Purpose dictates everything. What is your purpose? 
God says, if you find your purpose, you're going to, you're going to be happy all the time. You know, I really believe that this is my purpose. That's the reason why I do this, even though some days are good, some days are bad. Bad days don't give me grief. Good days don't make me happy. I am happy even when it's not working. I'm happy even when it's working. Now, some of you who understand say amen. You know, it is like a relationship with your husband. You know, sometimes you have an argument with your husband. Even then you stick on with him. Sometimes you're too happy with your husband. Even then you stick on with him. No matter what happens, you are just with him all the time. Hallelujah. That is what doing good and being happy means in your life. Some of us, we try to find our happiness in work. Don't try to find your happiness in work. Just be happy working. There's a big difference in that. Some of us, we try to find our happiness with people. If you try to find your happiness with people, then you're going to be a burden for the people. That's the reason why God has created you as a whole single person. Nothing is better for, ma for a man to be happy and to do good while they live. Isn't that really good? We always want to be happy and we always want to do good. Nobody likes to do bad things. Nobody likes to be sad. God always wants you to be happy. That is the purpose, very purpose of God. Now, you need to understand this, that nothing lasts. So if you're working to be happy, it is not going to last. If you're, if you're having a relationship to be happy, it is not going to last. But if you're happy by yourself, then you know what? You're going to sing even in your grievances. You're going to be happy even when everything falls apart. You're going to be happy because what you have already done and what you are going to do in the future. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, your debts won't last. They won't last. Say amen to that. Your debts, they won't last. You are quickly going to get out of your debt because your debt is on your face. Your sadness is not going to last because your sadness is only temporary. It is going to be out of your life soon. You need to understand this. Your sufferings won't also last. Your sufferings are temporary. Turn to your neighbor and say, do not, do not make a permanent solution for a temporary problem. If you remember that, say that. Now, the past is only a portion of your future that you live. The past is only a portion of the future that you lived. Some of us, we are stuck to our past. We are stuck to our uh, past life. You're thinking, Pastor, I'm a failure in my studies. I'm a failure. Just go check out that Nilofar guy, Babu Rao, his name is. Just check out his story. He joined as a cleaner. Now he's the owner of a big empire. Hallelujah. My dear brothers and sisters, just because you started as a failure doesn't mean that you're going to be a failure for the rest of your life. Your past is only a portion of what you have already lived. Your past is only little of your whole life. Some of you are not able to let go of your past. Some of you are still clinging onto that past. You are just saying, Pastor, my past, you don't know how horrible my situation is. You do not know how horrible my past is. You do not know what kind of life I have lived. God says, you know what? I don't really care about your past. All that I care is about your future. All that I care is about how you are going to live. I do not care how you have already lived. God says, I don't care about your past. You know what? I have already forgiven it. I have already forgotten it. You are the only one who's reminding me again and again of your past. Every Sunday you come, you say, dear father, forgive me of my past. God says, what past? You say, you know the past that I have done that? The cheating that I done? That mess up that I was in? The breakdown that I was in? God says, what are you talking? I don't even remember. God says, I have forgotten your past. You can find any number of scriptures saying God has forgotten and forgiven your past. It is you who is not able to forgive that. It is you who has not forgotten that. God says, just let go of your past. That business breakdown, that broken relationship, that mental illness, that torture that once you had, everything is past. And your past is only a portion what you have already lived. You cannot change the past, but you know what? You can create a new past. Pastor, what are you talking? Yes, your future is, will be your past in some time. So you, you cannot create a new past. You, you cannot do anything of what you have already done, but you can create a new past. My dear brothers and sisters, remember, it is time for you to make some good memories in your life. It is time for you to create some good thoughts in your life. Just forget about what has happened already. Do not keep on thinking and bringing that again and again and again. You know, 
once a very bad incident happened to us in our in our in our lives and that was around 2 2 and a half years ago one sunday i was thinking god why is this thought not leaving me and god answered me back it is not your thought that is not able to leave you it is you who is not able to leave your thought i was stuck i was like exactly i am only reminding of what happened two and a half years back i myself i'm reminding myself thinking oh my god this thing probably it's going to happen again and again god says you just need to forget it some of us are like that in our lives we are not able to forget of what happened that is the reason why we have some trust issues that is the reason why we have some discomfort in not being able to trust people again maybe it's your relationships that you are not working on you need to start trusting again you need to start putting down your foot and saying that you know what this time bad might happen but i'm going to try it again god says your past is only a portion of the life that i have given to you why are you clinging on to your past it is actually the future that gives you the hope to your past if you can look at this statement you cannot go to your future if you live in the past you cannot change the past but you can certainly live a new future you cannot go into your future if you just cling on to your past past my past it's not leaving me your past will never leave you until and unless you leave your past your past will never let go of you until and unless you leave your past in in philippians chapter 3 verse 12 it says not that i have already obtained all this or have already been made perfect but i press on to take hold of that for which christ jesus took hold of me now you need to understand this this statement carefully not that i have already obtained all this that means paul is not talking about the past remember that he is not saying oh you know what i was a general at that time i was a great i was great commander at that time i was a person from the army i am a man of discipline now paul is not saying paul is not at all saying that he is saying not that i have already obtained all this or have already been made perfect but i press on to take hold of that for which christ jesus took hold of me now what paul is saying is my past life i might be great i might have failed but it's not about my past but it is about what christ has taught me it is about god what god has planned for me my dear brothers and sisters are you thinking of what god has planned for you in your life are you thinking about what god wants to give you in your life or are you only thinking about your past are you only thinking about the failures that you already had i'm not living a life thinking about my past is what paul says i'm living a life thinking about how my future is going to be i am thinking about what i can achieve in the future i am thinking about the future what i can do i'm thinking not of my past success not of my past greatness but i am thinking of my, of the future that god is going to give me whoever believes that god is going to give you a great future just shout amen now i'm living a life looking at the future which christ has set for me is what paul says is that the kind of life that you're living is that the kind of situation that you are in is that the kind of future that you want if that is so then your future is now you possess your future right now now your future is not ahead of you but it is trapped within you your future is not ahead of you some of you might be thinking pastor i need to go into my future no you do not go into your future your future is right now your future is right now what you do what what you make of out of it how do you say so well i take my favorite example the mango seed and the mango tree if you look at the mango tree where is the mango tree it is trapped within the seed of the mango seed the seed contains the mango tree the tree is not outside of the mango seed you need to understand this carefully your seed is right now whatever you do right now is the fruit that you're going to create whatever you do right now the fruit is the future of it so if you take that mango seed and you plant it carefully you get a mango tree some of us we like mango trees we like mango fruits but we forget the fact that you shouldn't eat the mango seed or you shouldn't throw away the mango seed you should plant it carefully right now what god has given to you you need to plan about it you need to plant that seed carefully so it can exist in your future 
My dear brothers and sisters, are you throwing away your, your seed or are you planting it carefully? What are you doing? Some of us are hasty about our decisions. Some of us, we do not want to make a good life. So we are really hasty about it. We think, oh, what, what good does this seed make? And we just throw it away. God says, do not throw away the seed. That seed is your future. That seed is what is going to turn the seed into a tree. And the tree is going to start giving you fruits again. My dear brothers and sisters, today I'm asking you, are you willing to go into your future carefully? Are you thinking about the seed that God already has? And that seed is right now. Right now is the present that God has already given to you. Right now is the future that you are already in. What are you doing with right now? What are you, how are you handling it right now? How are you planning right now? Some of us, we take our decisions emotionally. Some of us, we try to, we try to make a decision out of emotions and God says, you know what? Do not make a decision emotionally. Why? Because you are creating a permanent solution out of your temporary problem. You are making a permanent solution out of a temporary problem. My dear brothers and sisters, this is a very, very interesting topic for you to understand. How you handle right now dictates what is going to happen in the future. How you handle right now? How do you handle your emotions right now? How do you handle your decisions right now? How do you want to take care of your health right now? How do you want to take care of your heating habits right now? How do you want to take care of your dressing sense right now? It is all about right now. It is not about the future. It is about right now. My dear brothers and sisters, if you take care of your right now, your future is automatically going to be taken care of. Remember, your future is much more important than your past. Your future is much more important than your past. Your past will, will never change, but your future can change because of what happens right now. Your future can change because of what happens right now. Remember, you possess your future now. You possess your future now, and God is committed to the future he has placed in your present. God is committed to the future that he wants to give it to you. God is committed. Pastor, you might be thinking, Pastor, every Sunday I come. Every Sunday I listen. Every Sunday I worship. God says, it is not about you coming, worshiping, and going back. It is about what are you doing listening to those words. It is about what are you doing listening to the songs. It is about what are you doing listening to those words. Some of us, we just come to make our seats warm. You know what? You don't need to make that seat warm that seat will automatically become warm when you sit on it. You need not do anything for it. God says, it is about what you do with your mind. It is about what you do right now with your mind. You might be thinking, oh, pastor, after I go back home, then I'm going to make a decision. God says, it's, it doesn't work like that. God says, it works right now how you make your decision. It works right now. Everybody say, right now, change myself. Right now, I make the decision. Right now, I'm going to change my direction. So you possess your future right now is what God says. And your future is much more important than your past. Don't make a decision based on your past, but make a decision based on your future. Take a decision based on your future. Jesus Christ came to forgive your past. Not so you can cry about your past, but... You can enjoy your future. Now just think about this. Why does God want to forgive your past? Why does God want to forgive your past? So you think you can be holy? No. He wants to forgive your past so your future can be bright. Jesus Christ is always worried about your future. He's not worried about your past. God says, I've already forgiven your past. It is you who needs to forgive yourself and forget it. My dear brothers and sisters, if you look at Isaiah 46 verse 9, this is what it says. Remember the former things, those of long ago. I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me. I make known end from the beginning. You need to understand, God wants to talk about the future when? In the past. I'm going to rephrase that again. Just read that carefully. I make known the end. What is the end? The future. The end is not the past. The end is the future. I make known the end from the beginning. That means God says, I'm going to give you the future in the past. 
Hallelujah. Because God lives beyond time. So you need to understand the language of God. You know, I make known the end from the beginning, from ancient times, what is still to come. So God is the one who wants to give you a good future. My purpose will stand and I will do all that I please. God says, you know what? You don't try too hard. Just do what I say and you will be successful. Just do what God says and God will make you successful. Do you believe that? Say amen. God is saying, remember that I'm God. That's it. The only thing that you need to remember is that I'm God from the past. The God from the ancient of days. God from the beginning. That's it. Everything else is about the future. Everything else is about what is about to come. Everything else is about what is going to happen in your life. The most important thing on earth is to make it to your future. The most important thing in your life is to make it to your future, not make it to your past. Don't go back to your past. Always go into your future. Hallelujah. Enter your future, my dear brothers and sisters. And let's read this and let's close this sermon. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 11. This is what it says. I have seen something else under the sun. The race is not to the swift or the battle to the strong. Nor does food come to the wise or wealth to the brilliant. Brilliant. Or favor to the learned. But time and chance happens to them all. That's what God says. What does that mean? That means probably the quickest won't win the race. You know, the quickest might not win the race. The strongest might not win the battles always. So, you know, probably you, might, you, you have given yourself 100%. Doesn't, doesn't necessarily make you successful. You know, there's a chance that you always fail. That's what God says. Nor does food come to the wise or wealth to the brilliant or the favor to the learned. That means maybe not all wise people are always rich. Maybe not all learned people are always, you know, wealthy. But this is what God says. L listen to that. But time and chance happen to them all. But time and chance, everybody gets it. Everybody gets the same opportunity. Everybody gets a time. Hallelujah. Aren't you happy for that? Everybody, everybody, there's a chance for you to win again. Were you a loser before? God says, you know what? I'm going to give you a chance. Let's see what you're going to do with, it, with that chance right now. God says, I'm going to give you another opportunity. You know, a God is a God of opportunities. Hallelujah. A God is a God of opportunities. Uh, hallelujah. Can you believe that? A God, is a, a God says, I'm a God who, who's going to give you second chance again. Maybe your broken relationships, I'm going to give you a second chance again to make it right. Probably you have cheated on your wife or your husband. God says, I'm going to give you a chance again so you can prove it again. Hallelujah. You know what? Maybe you, you failed in your previous job. God says, I'm going to give you a new, new job. Maybe it's time for you to prove again saying, I am the one who's going to make you successful. Now, my dear brothers and sisters, are you willing to take that second chance? Are you willing to, make, to take that second chance again? Are you willing to give that chance and say, God, I'm ready to jump in. I'm going to give my 100% again. Are you willing saying that, God, I'm ready to take that opportunity? God may not give the battle to the strong. God may not make the wise rich. But he does give everybody the same opportunity and the same chance. Your future success is related to God's success. You need to start believing that. Your future success is always related to God's success. God wants you to win. He is so desperate for you to win. And God is always behind your success. God says that I am the one who's going to make you successful. Remember, your success doesn't det determine his success. That means your failure also doesn't determine his success. But your future determines his future. I know this is a little, this has a lot of depth to understand, but you need to understand this carefully. God is so desperate for you to win. God is so desperate for you to be successful. The only thing that God can give you is, He can give you time and He can give you a chance. He can give you a time and He can give you an opportunity. He can give you time and He's, he's looking forward to you, looking at what are you going to do with that time and with that opportunity. Let's all stand onto our feet. Close our eyes. Just start thinking about your future that you are about to enter into. Do not think about your past. Do not think about, about what has already happened. But just say, Amen, God, I am ready to enter the future. I am ready to enter into the future that you, you are going to give me. 
I'm ready to enter into the future which is successful, which you have planned for me. I thank you, Lord, for every beautiful good thing that you have done in my life. Almighty Father, we thank you, Lord. We glorify your name, O Jesus, for you are the King of glory. Almighty Father, you are the one who gives us your glory, O Father. You are the one who gives us your favor. You are the one who blesses us in the best way possible, O Lord. Lord, thank you for giving me another opportunity today. Thank you for giving me another time today where I can enter, where I can say that, God, I am looking towards you. I am looking towards you, Father. We love you, Lord. We glorify your name. Almighty Father, we thank you for the word that you have given today, O Lord. We thank you for your grace and mercy which is in you every morning, O Father. O Lord, we know that you are the one who blesses us in abundance. You, we know that you are the one who gives us a chance once again, O oh Father. O oh Lord, we, I am looking towards that chance, O oh Father, where I can prove myself, where I can say that, God, thank you for giving me this chance and this opportunity where I am going to enter it successfully, O oh Lord. Lord, we glorify your name. We thank you, Father, for everything that you have done in our lives. Lord, as we are looking forward to another future, another destiny, another opportunity, another time, O oh Lord. We know that our future is not ahead of us, but it is trapped inside us, O oh Father. Just like how the tree is trapped inside the seed. The same way, O oh Father, a king is trapped inside a boy. A queen is trapped inside a girl, O oh Father. Lord, we know, we know that you have made us to be conquerors, more than conquerors. We thank you, Lord. We glorify your name. We thank you for each and every person who has come today and you thank you for blessing them abundantly, O oh Father. We thank you for each and every person who has given unto you, Father. We thank you and we glorify you. In Jesus' mighty name we ask and pray. Amen.